In this video, we are going to show you how to set up your Alibi Witness app to allow you to access your system remotely. You will first want to begin by making sure you have downloaded the Alibi Witness app from either the iTunes App Store or the Google Play Store. Once downloaded and installed, you'll want to go ahead and open up the app. Once you open the app, in the upper left hand corner you'll see a circle with three lines in it. This will actually take you to your menu. In the menu, you'll want to click on Devices. Once in Devices, you want to click on the upper right hand corner where you see the plus sign. This will bring down a menu that will say Manual Adding or Scan QR Code. Here you will choose Manual Adding. This will bring you to the screen where you'll input your device information. For the alias line, you can choose any name you wish to give the device. This is just a self-identifier for your purpose so that you know which device you're connecting to. Here we're going to choose the device name of DVR. Your register mode on the next line should say IP slash domain. For the address line, you're going to want to input the IP address of the device. This can be either the local IP address or it can be the IP address of your modem for remote connection. Remember, in order to use the modem IP address for remote access, you will need to ensure port forwarding has been done. If you need assistance in doing this, please see our video on how to set up port forwarding for your device. Next, you're going to want to put in the port assigned to it. By default, the port typically is at 8000. Next, you want to input the username and then the password. Once you've entered all your information, you want to hit the icon in the upper right. Once you do this, it'll attempt to connect to the device. Once you hit Start Live View, this will take you to the Live Camera View screen. Once at the Live View screen, if everything is successful, you should see your camera view here. At the bottom, depending on your device, you can actually choose to go to one camera, four cameras, nine cameras, or 16 cameras. If you have a unit that is more than 16 channels, you will actually be able to swipe to the left to choose between 16 camera grids. At the bottom of the live view screen, you'll see a few icons. The first icon will enable you to take a snapshot of the live image that you're seeing. And the second icon will allow you to record locally a small snippet of footage. The third icon is used for PTZ control. Should you have a PTZ camera connected, this will allow you to control that camera. The fourth icon will actually allow you to change the clarity of the image that you're currently seeing. The fifth icon will actually stop all live view video. Should you want to start them all at once, you will want to click that fifth icon again. Now if you were to swipe left on the bottom of these icons, that will actually show you four more icons. The second icon from the left, after you do this, is actually a speaker icon. This will actually allow you to listen to any audio should you have a camera and the device is configured for audio transmission. The microphone icon will actually allow you to speak or do two-way audio should the device and camera be capable of it. The second icon to the right is an alarm icon. This actually resets any alarms that should have occurred or are currently occurring. And finally, the last icon is a magnifying icon. What this will do is it will allow you to actually zoom in on the current image in any particular area that you select. Next we're going to go over remote playback in the app. To do this you'll want to go ahead and hit the upper left icon. This will take you to your menu. You want to select remote playback. Here you'll be able to view recorded video from the unit. Once you select a camera and a date and time you'll see a blue bar appear with the recorded footage. Here you can scroll through the blue bar to find the time and date that you want. Once you've found your selective video to playback, you can use the icons on the bottom to do multiple things. 
The first icon allows you to catch a snapshot of the current playing video. The next icon will actually allow you to create a snippet of video to save. The middle icon will pause your video. The icon with the 1x in it will allow you to determine the playback speed. The next icon will actually allow you to stop the playback altogether. Next, we are going to go over how to view any saved video or snapshots you have on your app. For this, you will want to click on the upper left icon. This will get you to your menu. You want to click on picture and video. Once there, you'll see a list of all the videos and clips that you've saved. You can click on any one of these snapshots or videos that you've saved in order to view it. Next, we're going to show you a little bit about the configuration of the app. To get to the app configuration, you'll click on the upper left hand icon. This will get you to your menu. You'll choose configuration. And the configuration screen will allow you to set a password protection for the app. This is different from the unit password that you use to log in. This will allow you to password protect your application should you not want everybody to have access to it. The next one would be traffic statistics. This tells you about your data usage, whether it be on a mobile network or Wi-Fi network. Wi-Fi settings allow you to connect to your Wi-Fi. Help will actually give you a listing of helpful items should you need any more explanation on it. The About will actually tell you what version of the application you're running. 